so let us delete these for the time being one tip for you for uh, eclipse you can see that since i have deleted all this code now these imports are of no use it is also saying that this import is never used so to remove all the unused imports at any point of time you have a shortcut named as control shift o so once you hit this shortcut it will automatically remove all these unnecessary imports now let's have a look at the test and xml part so the first line of this is doc type suit system and you need to put this url and this line is important because if you do not put this line the framework will give you error that it is important to include this line so even if you see this in exception you can copy it from there and put it here if sometime you miss this line otherwise our main xml starts from here which says that everything you want to execute will come under a suit and you can have multiple test suits here in this xml file so as a part of first suit you can give attributes which is name of test suit and you can also define whether you want to run these test cases in parallel mode or not in test suit you can define multiple tests so like one we can have multiple tests here so the first test one and its name is test one second test whose name is test two and this way we can have multiple test cases here in a suit and in a test what you want to execute that you can define here in the form of classes or in the form of groups now let us run these test cases in this configuration only so i am right clicking on the testng xml file and running this as testng project so let us see what happen here so if you see the order of execution so the order of execution here is before suit and then how many methods we have we have methods 1 2 3 here in test class a and then we have method test 4 method name 4 here in test class b in c we do not have anything and in this we want to execute test suit a and test suit b so so here the output is before suit and then test 1 before that before method and after that after method test 3 and 2 okay so 1 2 and 3 are part of test class a and you see here in both the test cases we have included test class a only so that's why these cases would be executed twice so 1 2 3 1 2 3 2 two times if you here do an import of b instead of a this way you can run 1 2 3 here as part of test 1 and test 4 as part of test 2 so let us run again with the test ng xml now run as test ng suit so if you see here this time four test cases ran before suit before method and test 1 after method before method test 3 after method before method test 2 after method and then for test 2 which is from test class b before method test 4 and after method and then after suit all right so we do not get to know that where these classes actually switched because one test set of test cases were part of test class a one set of test cases were part of test class b so it is right time to import or to include before class annotation as well which you can see here we also have before class and after class all right so let us add before class and after class so i'm copying before method and pasting here so instead of before method i rename it to before class and name it as before class and for after class you again copy and put a method for after class So now run the same set of test cases with this test ng xml and you will see the difference here that before suit get executed and as it came here to run the first test 
it came here to import first test class before executing any part of test class a it runs before class and then it runs all the three test cases of this class and following each test case before every test method it runs before method and after every test method it runs after method and once all the methods of test class are executed it runs after class okay so this is first test case that is over and then after that it runs before class for the second test which we have here which required test class p to be loaded and then all the test methods for this get executed with before method and after method and then it executes after class so that is the order of execution we also see there is a set of annotation named as before test and after test so like before method and after method were for test method so before method get executed before every test method and after method get executed after that test method and before test and after test get executed according to these tests that we define here in the xml and these tests may contain multiple test methods now let us a uh, deep dive into before test and after test so in the xml you can see here that we have defined two test here so one test is test1 which has classes and the class name is test2.a test2 is package and a is test class name and the second test is having class b so in short we can say that test1 has three test cases which were in test class a 1 2 and 3 and uh, the test2 which is having class b it has only one test case so let us now focus on before test and after test so for that i copied before class and after class and i am just changing the annotation name as well as the method name i am changing it to bt and at also we can change the message that we were printing on console now let's see what all things we have here in the parent class we have before suit and after suit annotations we have before method and after method we have before class and after class and we have before test and after test now when we run it we can see the execution order so first of all before suit get executed at the end after test after suit get executed now it is time to refer this xml because rest of the order would be defined here in the xml only so suit is over then it comes to test in test we have classes so that's why first it comes to before test because before this test it executes before test then it goes inside and it refers to class a so it loads the class before that it executes before class and then it goes inside the class it has three methods there test 1 test 2 and test 3 so before each method it executes before method after each method it executes after method so that's how three test methods get executed in that class so that class is now over after that it executes after class so this class block is now finished so once this class block is finished it then executes after test because this test is also completed then it moves to test 2 and it follows the same rule that we have followed here in the first test and then once it executes test 2 also then at the end it will execute after suit and it will simply move on.